My name is uh, Ramadan Chimgwe. I'm one of the co-founders of the Rolex booth. The Rolex booth is uh, an idea or concept that uh, started on the 25th of October 2019. And this is something that came up as a result of uh, a burning desire or need to meet what we felt was uh, a need in the market. So me and my friends, we have been uh, into traveling across Uganda for some good time. And one of the things that we noticed across all the spaces that we have been to in Uganda is this love for the Ugandan Rolex. Every place that you go to, people love the Rolex. You go to Kisoro, you go to, you go to Fort Porto, you go to Jinja, everyone has that love for the Rolex. So we felt like it is something that we could also exploit, but uh, this time around with some form of innovation. Because ideally when you look at the Ugandan Rolex, it's more of uh, you have that chapati and uh, eggs fried uh, on the street side and then you have people lining up and then somebody makes the Rolex and then you go away. So we wanted to cater for something more rich and uh, better to cater for that section of uh, a person or clientele base that we felt loves the Rolex but they cannot maybe stand by the roadside or they have very many concerns so we felt like we can redefine and innovate something better and uh, that's how we came up with the whole concept from the approach of the setup of the place to the Rolex that we serve you notice that it's really something different and the first of its kind in the region because when you look at the idea of, uh, for example, the, the Rolex itself, we wanted to give people something new that they have not experienced before. That's how we came up with the idea of the chicken Rolex, the beef Rolex, and the vegetable Rolex for the people who don't eat uh, the meat. And then you have the aspect of hygiene. Most of the people who love the Rolex, they have concerns to do with the hygiene. And uh, they would also want a place where they can be able to sit and maybe catch up with friends and have a conversation maybe over a drink, which the usual Rolex people that we know that have existed for years do not offer because it's more of a roadside experience. You buy your stuff and then you walk away. So we wanted to provide something that caters for that unique dining experience, something that caters for the hygiene, but also something that now caters for something richer and better in terms of value that people can experience and they feel like yes this is a new addition on the market because we felt there was that corporate market or base that hadn't been tapped into you have people in the banks you have them in ngos and all these corporate organizations in Barra who love the rolex but they cannot stand by the roadside you're ordering for your rolex and a guy is passing by with a truck of sand and by the time you know it your whole rolex is full of you know sand you get home and you're really disappointed so we felt we can redefine the whole experience and bring to this whole business space something better, something new that caters for all those concerns about that person out there who loves the Rolex but they feel the existing uh, uh, offer doesn't cater for their preferences. Uh, the recipe is something that uh, we, it was something that was done, uh, we were a team. We sat down based on what we felt were the tests and preferences of our target market. We sat down and we asked ourselves what do we feel or what do we think can constitute something that will be able to really sell to this kind of clientele that we are targeting. So that's how we sat down and we said, if we are to work out this, apart from maybe having the eggs and you're having onions and you're having the tomatoes and maybe you're having the chapati, what else can you bring in and then you make the whole experience better? So now we came up with different recipes and we did some trials for some good time until a point where we ourselves wanted to offer this to the market, felt like this is something exciting, this is something that would uh, really sell out and then we introduced it to the market but we had done so many trials until when we felt this is the best that can get to the market and be able to sell out there because we felt if it's exciting me probably it should be able to excite somebody out there first anniversary uh, I th 25th of october 2020 will be making one year of uh, operations and i must say that it has been uh, a very exciting and equally challenging year because we introduced this new product to the market in a region where no one else is offering uh, the same product and we really did not know how it is going to turn out but uh, we are so happy that 
people embrace the Rolex and they have supported the brand in so many ways. But uh, the biggest push or gave, uh, something that gave us that uh, feel of getting to the market for people to get to know us, it was social media. So we exploited the power of social media to really make this brand get out there. And pe whenever people came here, they have already shared their experiences, reviews, referrals. And that's how more and more people have been attracted here. So for this uh, first uh, 12 months, it's been more of uh, a learning experience. You're giving out something there, but you're not really convinced that you have mastered what you're really offering. Because on every day or every week, you can be sure that you are going to make a mistake somewhere here. Or maybe somebody will not be happy with the whole experience. But it's about how do you manage that situation so that somebody feels like that you care enough for them to come back. Because the feedback that we get from people has been key to maintaining whatever we offer every day so every time people come here or maybe they make their orders we make effort to reach out to them and get to know what kind of experience did they have and how can we make their whole experience better and that's how we've been able to improve and improve and improve for example from the day we started we did not offer the smoothies the juices it was strictly a rolex experience but along the way we noticed that when somebody comes here and you're enjoying the rolex you'd maybe want a drink and maybe spend more time with people and then we came up with another section where we can be able to make for you uh, uh, some juice we make for you a smoothie you come with your kids and we offer you ice cream because we fed those where they part of the components that can make the whole experience more exciting and better because in business at the end of the day you want to stand out by offering something that no one else is offering so if you come into business and then you're offering exactly what everyone else is offering then you're not innovating for future trends so that is what we've been thinking about and every time people get here they feel like there is something new that is uh, coming up to make their whole experience uh, better. But maybe lastly, to, uh, to tackle the aspect of uh, the starting and the offering and everything, when you look at the entire appeal of this press, the architecture appeal and everything, it is something that is very unique, you don't find elsewhere. It is something we felt we could do and attract or appeal to the eyes of that target person. When you see everything here, it's a wooden concept. And we said we needed the wooden concept because we are so passionate about nature and then we wanted to bring in that feel of, you have that feel of the wild but in an urban setting and uh, we really feel the ambience of any sport when it comes to restaurant, hospitality and everything. It's very key to attracting and making people feel like yes, they belong to a unique place where they can even take a selfie and share with a friend and then they feel like they need to also come to the place. So uniqueness in terms of the product you're offering on the market, the appeal of the place and also innovating for future and uh, emerging trends. When you look at social media, at the end of the day, when you're running a business, you need to understand when it comes to social media, the different uh, segments or aspects of social media, which one do you think is going to really resonate with your target audience? So for us, we are looking at this urban corporate clientele person that we hadn't uh, tapped into, who uses Twitter, who uses Instagram, who is on Facebook. But for the start, we exploited uh, Twitter so much because we felt that's the area where most of the people that we wanted to get into really exist. That's why they spend most of the time. That's why people feel like there is authenticity when it comes to pushing a brand compared to other platforms where you have a lot of unseriousness and the sort. We said, let's use Twitter and then we also use platforms like Instagram and Facebook to push every aspect of the brand. And that's how we're able to penetrate the market. Because when you're starting out, you cannot afford things like maybe going to advertise on radio or TV, but uh, you exploit the power of social media because you feel the person you want to reach out to and bring here, that's where they are, that's where they spend the time. So you get them where they spend most of the time. The media platforms that we use, uh, we are on Twitter, we are on uh, Facebook, and we are also on uh, Instagram. So when you search the Rolex booth on Facebook, on Twitter, on uh, Instagram, You'll be able to see it and trust me one of those photos that you will see first is maybe a rolex maybe plated and maybe a glass of juice you'll be able to really tell that this is uh, the handle that i was looking for
Yes, it's uh, something we have in plan, but not now. We would want to have uh, maybe, not necessarily us running those branches, but maybe running some kind of maybe a franchise in the region. But we felt uh, before you maybe expand and get to all those other spaces or markets where you feel there is potential, you need to really first do well home. So we want to first really work out our offer here until a point where we feel we have now built or designed a culture of service, of uh, uh, communication, motivation of our team to make sure that everything is well aligned to the best of what you would want to the business to be. Then you can now have the same done elsewhere. Otherwise, if you now don't manage growth in that context and then you feel like now you need to go elsewhere and you do the same, the efforts, you may spread your efforts uh, to so many areas of focus and at the end of the day you end up diluting your brand and uh, even affect the offers that people have always known you for. So we think it's, uh, it's a good thing, it would give us an avenue to grow, but we need to be very careful about how you, we manage that growth. The Rolex booth is uh, located in uh, Mbarara city and uh, it's, uh, to be specific, it's, along, it's at the heat along uh, Kakoba Road. If you are getting out of town, probably for those who are maybe in the center of the town, you know where maybe Fresco Supermarket is, that same street where you find uh, the road that leads you to Kakoba, for most people who know that. So it's just a few meters from town and just by the roadside, you get to access uh, the Rolex booth. We have uh, a washing bay up there at the heat and other services within the confinements of uh, this place. So anyone who is coming here, you can be sure this, that this is a one-stop point where you can have comfort, where you can have uh, a meeting with friends, where you can uh, really catch up with anyone that you feel like you want to catch up with to really shed off that stress and fatigue that comes uh, with work. Uh, some of the challenges that uh, are really uh, come with this kind of uh, business is, uh, first of all, is uh, sustaining your operations through really a market. You need a market, a certain segment of market to be really buying from you for you to be able to sustain your operations. We have really high operational costs uh, that we incur, which I would regard as fixed whether you're really making out sales or not, you really have to incur them because you have staffing and at the end of the day you have to pay people. And then we go to this issue of this whole COVID-19 pandemic which affected our operations. For some people, much as uh, most of the, the restrictions that came with the lockdown have been eased, for some people they are not really comfortable with uh, coming out and dining and uh, sitting in uh, groups of people. So in some way that's still affecting that potential market that we had really penetrated because for many people, the comfort of this place, they loved it. But the COVID aspects, they still push away some people and they feel like, no, it's not yet safe for us to come to a place like this. And of course, there is competition. You have so many uh, competing uh, things or uh, outlets that people look out for. But for us, we feel competition is a healthy thing. It provides us avenues to learn and see how we can even provide better solutions to everything that we are doing as a business. So we are not so much really complaining about the challenges. Instead, we want to see how we can learn from them and we turn them into positives that can give us an edge. For the other thing that we are trying to also promote here is that this is a place where people can even uh, host their small events. If you're planning a birthday party, if you're planning uh, maybe an anniversary, those small, small events, a baby shower and the sort, this is a very unique spot. Because if you came here for a birthday party, trust me, the photos that you take in this place, you can be sure that there are some people who will even ask you whether the place is in Uganda because of the uniqueness that the place provides in that uh, context. So we are trying to see, to think through those other innovative offers that cater for those uh, future trends or also cater for that person out there who would want to be here but they feel there is something about you that is lacking when it comes to their tests and preferences and then we see how we can uh, match up all that to cater for their needs. Now, the two there are two avenues through which now people place in their orders for, for a Rolex if they want that convenience, which is something that we are really promoting and pushing for because uh, we feel there is that market that is uh, 
not tapped into that wants convenience people are in the comfort of their offices and even because of this weather they don't really feel like it's uh, really fine for me to move out and have a meal and come back so we cater for that for some they are able to access our platforms and then they initiate calls and place their orders and then we find ways of making the orders delivered to their doorsteps for some other people they access us through some uh, delivery platforms like in Tuha food we are also listed there so they access the platform you place in an order when you place your order Tuha gets the notification at their back end and then they make calls here we work on the order and then their people pick the order and then deliver it to the client who has placed uh, that order that's it for now but uh, we hope we can be able to think and innovate out better uh, approaches that can cater for that person who wants to have their meal within the com comfort of their home without necessarily coming here. Uh, leisure innovators or anyone who is uh, thinking about something to do with uh, hospitality, you must know that hospitality is an industry that really changes so fast. There are so many things when it comes to the traveler. Travelers are some of the most exposed people in the world and they make so many comparisons about the happenings uh, in other parts of the world. So one of the things that can make you stay ahead of uh, in that industry is to really make sure that you innovate for future trends. You shouldn't wait to get to a point where something is already existing and then you also want to copy it from somewhere and then you do the same. You must be able to anticipate and know what could be the future trends in regard to what I'm doing so that you innovate. Because at the end of the day, people will not always ask you what they want. In most cases as a business, you are the one supposed to innovate and you give them reason for them to go for that. People, we do not go out to ask people that should we have a wooden concept or we put up something permanently. For us, we thought it's something that would resonate with their tests and appeal to them. And that's how we came up with it. So you must innovate for future trends if you are to remain relevant in this industry because the rate at which it changes is so fast. What I can say lastly is uh, to thank you guys from uh, Digirati Talk for always uh, reaching out to innovators, uh, to share their stories trust me you see when it comes to this whole idea of innovation we are always taught to look out for inspiration from the big names across the world and for some people they really find it so hard to pick out insights from these people because some of their stories do not relate with the environment that we are in but when you are able to pick out people within the confines of uh, where we are in Imbara, you go to Vushenyi, you go to Kampala people are able to pick out insights that relate to maybe what they are going through what they have gone through before so they are able to find reason to find uh, such people uh, to be inspirational or to rely on to really do something that can bring positive change uh, in the world so you are sharing stories that have never been told before and I commend you for that. My name is Kihunde Patient Sarah, and I'm one of the workers here. Uh, my experience working with the Rolex booth has been a very, a very teachable experience. I've learned a lot in regard with business, um, I've learned so much to do with customer care and all that stuff. Literally, um, I've learned so much to do with business and handling of customers and marketing. To some point, it is challenging as you go and meeting different customers. Of course, you know, people, we have, uh, we have different perceptions about things and we have different ways on how we handle things or how we go about things. But regardless, we have to move on and learn your customers and uh, learn to live with them regardless. <laughs>